As the prophet of esports, I rely on trustworthy and meaningful data every day. Data from our research partner, YouGov, offers the most complete view of esports fans and gamers in the world, providing context to who they are, what they think, the brands they buy, and things they do. YouGov's connected insights and research services inform strategy at every level. If you're a team, a brand, agency, or rights holder, you should be talking with YouGov. Their partners measure and maximize ROI and are telling compelling stories with data. Visit yougov.com slash gaming dash esports to learn more. Uh, I'm going to use this next story uh, as a, a, not a shameless plug, a, a proud plug of, of the other shows we're doing. So let me, let me read you the next story, the headline here. And the headline is, China starts rebuff uh, of various metaverse trademark applications amid rush to hype the internet's next generation. Um, so this is a bit of a metaverse story. It's a totally a metaverse story. If you love kind of metaverse news discussion, I highly encourage you guys go check out our two new shows. Meta Woman, hosted by Lindsay herself, um, talking to incredible women in the gaming and metaverse industries. And Meta Business, hosted by The Juice and I, The Juice at Jeff Cohen 23, who's always tweeting about incredible metaverse memes and things like that. You just um, that, that's definitely the place you want to go. Um, <laughs> Jeff and I host meta business and it's an amazing show talking about the business side of the metaverse. So if you love business of esports, I guarantee you, I, I will guarantee you will love meta business. Um, so let, let's talk about this though, on this show, because I think it's important that we touch every so often on metaverse stuff here. And, and what this story is, it says a number of metaverse related trademark applications have been denied registration by the National Intellectual Property Administration. This is in China. And this includes submissions made by NetEase, I, I, he, I don't even know how to pronounce that, and Zhao Hongshu. Um, and supposedly they've denied, I think the number was like um, uh, 50, it says 1,510 mainland Chinese companies, mostly in the technology sector, have recently applied to register trademarks related to the metaverse. That number was up from 130 companies just four months ago, and many of them, I think, have been denied. So uh, applications from the likes of Alibaba, Tencent, ByteDance were still pending review, and multiple of them have been denied. Uh, there were applications for, from video gaming giant NetEase, streaming video provider Ikey, and social commerce platform Zhao Hongzhu. What do you guys think of this sort of race in terms of trademark land grabs around the metaverse um but specifically with the way china is handling it which seems to be like no one gets anything right like uh, we don't want to deal with this right now I, i'm i'm exaggerating a little bit but that seems to be kind of the reaction here um and maybe tie it back to what you think will happen in the u.s or what is happening in the u.s um jeff or Lindsay, i don't know if you guys want to start or have Lindsay, thoughts I'll, on let, I'll let you start I, I feel like i always get the spotlight first it's all good yeah i think well, I think Facebook changing its name to Meta just really <laughs> set off an even worse firestorm um, for the branding, which I always point out to guests that come on that we had our branding first. Um, we did. <laughs> and I don't even think Facebook knew Facebook was changing its name when they changed it. <laughs> so we were definitely the early adopters. Um, I do think that all of the interest in it is is encouraging. I think that we're still at a point where everyone's figuring out what it means for them, which is kind of a good thing. And I, I like to see so many different companies and countries and stuff kind of taking a stab at it. I think that that's uh, in, in the beginning, it's always nice to see like a lot of fresh and creative ideas out there. Um, when it comes to China, just basically blocking everything. I think as we all know, it's really backwards thinking. I don't, I, I don't, see that as a good move and they're going to have to deal with it eventually. So just pushing it off until later is only harming anyone who still has the room to create and innovate in that under that regime. Um, but yeah, I, I overall am excited by all the people coming forward and trying to do stuff in the metaverse. Jeff, I don't know if you had thoughts. Well, I, I mean, I generally agree with Lindsay. I mean, it's uh, this is, this is another example of China sort of, um, censoring and just being uh, generally unfavorable to the gaming industry. Um, it's not at all, honestly, it's not at all surprising that China would would be skeptical of the metaverse, just given 
you know, what the metaverse portends to potentially be kind of this, this, reality where everyone goes into a digital world and it's all decentralized and it's not controlled by any one entity. There's freedom. You own your asset. Like pretty much everything I just described is like the opposite of what China wants. So it's not like, it's, it's very not surprising that they would want censorship or control of if there you know, is a metaverse eventually in China, which there probably will be, it will be controlled by the government probably just because that's, the way the internet works in China. And I think the metaverse is, is the successor to, to sort of the internet as we know it now. So I don't know that there's much more to it than, than kind of the simple, the simple sort of China story that we've, we've kind of been telling for a while. I mean, at what point do, do they really start like, look, the, the crackdown on crypto happened there, right? The crackdown on new game development, the crackdown now on even trademarks around the metaverse at some point, you would think, like even the, the the native Chinese companies here are being rejected, right? This is not like Facebook's gone and and then they may be one of the fifteen hundred companies that applied for trademarks there. Like we don't know; it's not not mentioned in that article. But you're talking about companies like Tencent and Alibaba and ByteDance and you know really um, native, some of them practically state owned enterprises, right? Getting yeah. rejected for trademarks there. This this does start to feel a little bit like a philosophical objection to whatever this is. This, there's no longer any business kind of um, reasoning here, right? Because it feels like they're going to miss the boat in a major way on all of this if if this attitude continues. Uh, do you guys disagree with that? Or a lot of head shaking now for the <laughs> listeners to the <laughs> to the show. <laughs> um, and it's scary, right? Because I think. I wonder how an industry bounces back from that when you have so many gamers there, so many very avid gamers there being cut out of a native industry like that. Um, I, this has to come to a head at some point, right? Like something has to break. At some point, you know, I, I don't know what happens in China around gaming and around the metaverse, but it's either going to be like, call it whatever, not gray market, but like workarounds at a, at a, at an industrial scale or, or just a totally dead industry, like a society not plugged into gaming whatsoever. I, I don't know how else this ends, but this seems um, quite backwards. 